Good morning. Uh, I'm in an unusual spot this morning. I'm out in my mom's uh, front yard, uh, standing next to an orange tree. Just pulled this off, and uh, most of the oranges are picked that you can reach from the ground. Now they're up there where you need a ladder to pick them. But um, I'm just sitting here thinking this morning of some things. Um, if you look close, you'll probably see there's uh, there's honeybees. Uh, I can smell the uh, orange blossoms, and um, and if the picture kind of fades in and out, I tried to get the camera in a shady spot, but the sun's moving. And so the sun might get on the lens, hope it won't ruin it. But um, if, you, if you could look close here, you'd see blossoms where honeybees are going, beautiful smell of, of the citrus blossoms. Um, maybe back in behind, there's a couple of oranges you can see, but up high there's a lot of oranges. But if you look over to your left, my right here, looks like an old dead tree. And what there is there, is that's a pear tree and it just looks as dead as it can be but I'll tell you it it gives us the best pears and uh, we'll just clean up hundreds of pears off that tree and uh, right now it's dormant most people know that trees go dormant uh, citrus don't and by the time we're done picking the oranges and the lemons there'll be new oranges and lemons on the tree and if I yell in the middle of this because some bee thought I was a flower and stung me but um, uh, I just was thinking today about life and some of the things that we face in life and and there are days We're like this tree and things are blossoming and going great and Family and marriage and job and and there's prosperity going and and you just get up every day with anticipation And then there's other days kind of like that that uh, pear tree back there and you think Boy, life is not very enjoyable right now, and I'm just kind of enduring this thing. And uh, but you know, both those are a part of life. And uh, give us a few months, and and uh, those pears are gonna that tree's gonna be covered with leaves and covered with pears. And uh, we gotta we've gotta guard this thing of thinking that we always need to be like this, because God knows. A couple of thoughts. You know, the Bible says that we ought to be faithful, knowing that the same afflictions we face are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world. And uh, we need to remind ourselves that we're not the only one hurting. Uh, like I think we've got uh, five families in our church that have a young person with one form of a handicap or another. And, and that's a weight on a family, but they're not the only ones. And there's many that God has entrusted a difficulty to. And, and it is hard, no one denies it. But God has a plan, and, and God knows what's going on. And uh, there are families in our, and, and that's through no fault of anyone. It's just God has a plan. And then, of course, there are some families in our church who've been through a divorce, or maybe in their past there was a drug or alcohol problem. And, uh, and maybe we made bad choices, or maybe someone we're married to made bad choices. We're not looking at any blame here. We're just saying some of our burdens came because of us or others making wrong choices. But you know what's great? Our church is flourishing with the, the uh, investment of the skills and gifts of these who along the way in life got hurt. And it's just a reality. But that there is hurt doesn't mean we become useless. And, uh, you know, in, a, in a, the trees around me here, there's a pomegranate over here. There's a lemon over there. There's a tangerine behind me. And I can only get so much in a picture that's worthwhile like this. But, you know, each one of these trees reacts different to different situations. And yet all of them are designed by God to be fruitful. And, and that old devil, he'll come along in your dormant day when things are struggling. And he'll try and convince you that you're of no value, that you don't matter. And see, he's playing head games. And that in, in Hebrews chapter 12, down about verse 3, it says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. You see, he'll start throwing stuff at you. Oh, God's not fair. It won't work for you. It may work for that other lady or that other man at church, but it won't work for you. And uh, somebody else has got it better than you. And, and that old devil, he'll, st he'll start throwing stuff in here. And what you need to do is, uh, it talks about in 1 Peter 5, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Uh, we need to decide we are going to resist that. That stuff starts coming up here. How do we fight the, the mental attacks of the devil? Uh, God doesn't care about you. He left you alone, left you 
with the financial burdens or health burdens or whatever. And, and where is God? Where's the God of, of, of all the goodness in this story we're living right now? And, and I'll tell you, he said he's going to go prepare a place for you. And where he is, there you be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he said, if I go, I'll come again. And so I'll tell you where Jesus is. He's preparing a place and he's coming back and to get you and get me and take us there. And we won't worry about it. There'll be no more dormant trees, I don't think, in heaven. Because the one tree in heaven, it talks about that bears fruit, bears 12 kinds of fruit, one kind of fruit each month. Isn't that a great tree? But, uh, you know, you, you think about the fruit that comes from, from these fruit trees. And, and again, the orange is one that seems to go year round where others are dormant. And you may be in that dormant time and, uh, and you're looking at someone who seems to always flourish. All I can tell you is don't let the devil get in your head. And now how do we resist him? God's got plans and God may have you at home watching a bunch of little babies or God may have you alone as a, as a senior citizen. And you're wondering, you know, I'd sure like to have whatever. Um, and and all, all I can say is we've got a good God. I've just decided, let's trust God. Now, I may not like my circumstances, but let's just trust God. I may not even enjoy my circumstances, but let's just trust God. Uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. And, and it wasn't. He was going to drink the cup of bitterness. He was going to be rejected by his friends and his country and his religion. He was going to have his own father turn his back on him. And it was all very ugly. But it had to be done for your and my salvation. So what do we do? Well, over in Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of the Christian and the sword of the Spirit being the Word of God. And so if I feel like some injustice has been in my life, I'm looking at Joseph in the Bible who had injustice. I'm thinking about Daniel who had injustice. Naaman's handmaid who had injustice. I'm going to think through those scriptures. You know what? I'm using the sword of the Spirit to resist the devil. I'm fighting fight him. Don't just give in to that old devil. Resist him. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. And I'm not just going to give in to satanic attacks. Um, along comes some, maybe some pride. And uh, I, boy, things are going pretty good for me. And I'm not like that old dormant pear tree over there. Things are going great. Oh, be careful. God resisteth the proud. I'm using scripture. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And see, the scriptures are our sword. And could I encourage you, this spring, let's take time to get into the word of God. Let's take time to read it, take time to memorize it, and catalog it. Find verses on humility and put them all in a spot where you can read them all together. Find verses on mercy and write them down. Take notes. And people study everything in the world but their Bibles. You know, you read one chapter, put it down, forget everything you said. Don't do that. I spent time this morning writing down about Abraham and how uh, the Old Testament story we know about Abraham, but the New Testament talks about Abraham and different passages from James and Romans and Hebrews and putting where they were in the life of Abraham. I'll tell you, I learned some great stuff and put some pretty good doctrine together on justification and imputation and things like that. Um, I don't know if I'll ever preach any of that, but it's stuff I enjoy studying. But see, where did I get it? From the sword of the Spirit. And so let me encourage you. Uh, let's, let's read our Bibles, take time to take notes and study. Just scribble whatever you read that day. And uh, let's decide that we're going to press on. Now, don't let the devil get you down um, because of maybe there's no fruit on the tree right now. Oh, there is. You, can't, you just can't see it. But you know what these blossoms are? These blossoms are a promise of fruitfulness to come. Uh, all over our up uh, a little bit to my right is our, our uh, peach and apricot and apple and and um, I don't know what other nectarine and our other uh, apricot, those kind of trees. Well, they're all pretty dormant, except they just have blossoms on them. And you know, the tree may look dead, but there's these blossoms that are a promise. And I can tell you, God's given us some promises and the blossoms of the word of God that, that book that promises us so much, so much encouragement and so much hopefulness. Now that, that pear tree over there, it doesn't have a bud. It doesn't have a flower. It just looks as dead as can be. But if I would remember to do this again in three months, you'd see that thing covered with blossoms and honeybees like this one because the, the promise is coming. I was looking, I thought I saw a little orange here, but it's a curled leaf. But these blossoms, they're a promise. 
And you know, the Word of God, as you open that up, it's a promise. It's a promise of what's going to come. It's a promise that you're not alone. It's a promise that you're not the only one carrying burdens. Uh, there's people, I know, I know people around the country that have trials so much more difficult than mine. And, and we call and text off and on. I want to be an encouragement. They're an encouragement to me. Um, there are people who've lost their loved ones. There are people who've lost little children and had to go to the cemetery and bury a child. Can't even imagine it. Just recently, one of the men who used to go to our church moved out of the area. His adult son died. And we were talking on the phone. I said, you know, we're not supposed to bury our children. That's just not in the plan. And yet here he is planning a funeral for his only son. And uh, But I'll tell you, he's got a father who knows how it feels to lose his son. And as you open that Bible up in your trials, and you open the Bible up in your loneliness, you open your Bible up in the days you just question, and you don't understand, understand this, that book is full of the blossoms of hope for tomorrow, and that we'll be together again. We'll see each other again. And why am I here? Well, if, I, if, if God didn't have a purpose for me to be here, then he'd have me somewhere else. We got to believe God's alive and involved. And so I may not know my purpose. You know, it might be I'm here just to get through this so God could say to somebody else, look how they handled their problems. Suck it up, you big sissy. I don't know what God, God would say that, but I just happen to believe that there are times that you and I have looked at Job and seen how 10 children dead, life, uh, business all gone. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you and I sit here and say, you know what? He can tough it out. I can tough it out. And But we don't think about God using us that way. It's okay to use Job that way, but I don't want to be a blessing that way. But God uses us. And and God has got plans for us. Oh, let me encourage you. Be in your Bibles. And uh, remember that in 1 Peter, um, the, the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren in the world. You're not the only one. I'm not the only one. We're going to be all right. There's promises in the Word of God. Those flowers, you can't eat those. The bees get some great honey off of them. And then maybe there's an illustration that though you and I don't get anything out of this, somebody one day will get as they gather that pollen, make their honey. Someone's going to gather that honey. And the, just the sweetest, purest honey you get, in my mind, is from citrus. And, uh, and all this that looks like it's not doing anything for us, it'll give us that good honey later on. And later on, we're going to have the oranges, although we climb the ladder. We can get the oranges today. But uh, down in the fall, the, these this will be loaded with oranges. That pear tree in the summer, uh, into summer, it'll be loaded with pears. And uh, could I just encourage you, don't look at just what you see today. Open the Bible, look at what God promises. Look heavenward, knowing he's a good God. Uh, think about your friends and brethren in the world. We're not alone. Everything's all right. We got a great God. And we've got a wonderful Heavenly Father, and he's going to see you through. Hey, let's pray for a great weekend tomorrow morning. We have a great soul winning breakfast tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And uh, then uh, there'll be others show up after breakfast. Some will come for breakfast. I hope you'll come for breakfast. But if you want to come later, we'll just fellowship for a bit. About 945, we'll have a quick meeting. And uh, we'll divide up. And we'll go out to the community witnessing, passing out tracts, trying to lead people to Christ. We have some Bible clubs going on where we'll go to different parks and neighborhoods. Literally having Sunday school in the park. Last Sunday, we had three uh, senior citizen ladies come. Uh, to church and they were there in the auditorium that were met in our kids bible club in the park and some of our men have uh, been going in the area right around the park and they met these senior citizens invited them to the park well in the park they've been having sunday school so these ladies 11 12 14 15 each week a group of senior citizens walk down to the park it's just right next door to where they live sit at the picnic tables our school principal thank god for school principals that still preach out in public and he goes teach the sunday school lesson in the park and uh then they get get them all back to their their apartments and uh and so that's been going on for a long time but now this week three of them in church and uh, what a blessing that is so pray for a good day tomorrow pray that people get saved look the mess the world's in any day jesus could be coming again one more person getting saved could be the answer one more family trusting Christ. Hey, let's pray and ask God's blessing on us. I hope you have a great Friday. And I look forward to the weekend. Look forward to seeing you in church Sunday if you can join us. And again, you pray that God would bless richly what's going on. Just one more announcement. Don't forget our ladies' conference coming up. Uh, two weeks from today, two weeks from yesterday, um, the uh, Thursday starts. Two weeks from Thursday, Thursday night, our ladies' conference starts. 
and it'll be a great ladies conference. Hope you can come and join us. And I'm not sure if it'll be live streamed or anything, but it'll be a great time. Join us as we have speakers, young ladies, just, um, we've got uh, Faith Reynolds is one of our speakers. I guess she's 30 years old. And then we've got Jojo Moffitt coming and, and um, she's over 30. We'll just say that much. I know she's a grandma, might be a great grandma. I'm guessing she's, well, she's older than me. And so she's at least 50. But uh, we've got grandma speaking. We've got young mothers speaking and everybody in between. And oh, it'll be a great ladies conference. Hope you ladies will come and men. You help make it easy for your wives to get there. Watch the kids, get them some extra money. Uh, tell them, get out of the house, get down there. You guys, guys could come down, help our young people wash the ladies' cars as they're at the conference. Uh, you could come down, drive the golf cart, be an usher uh, in the parking lot, greeting people, bringing them in. Uh, let's be a blessing. Have a great day, and let's pray that God would bless our weekend together. Thanks for joining me this morning.